we're back. I mean, I feel like this is our first Saint story of the year, but it's not. If you haven't already watched Father Mark Mary's, just Go close this it. video. Go watch it. Bank. Oh, we are literally matching. I mean, shoes matching. Wow. What are we chatting about today? We've got some fun stuff. Amen. Mostly about starting fresh. All aboard the fresh start train. Choo choo. If you're anything like me, maybe you made a New Year's resolution at the beginning of the year. And if you're even more like me, maybe it's already collected dust. Already disappointing, I'm kind of disappointed in myself. You know how it goes. And I think that's pretty standard for like New Year's resolutions, especially following a year that was so chaotic and disappointing. We can kind of like look to 2021 and be like, it's a fresh start something's gonna change. And while things do change and there's always grace in a new season, it can be kind of disappointing when things stay the same or we don't follow through or we let ourselves down because we set the bar too high or things didn't turn out how we wanted to. But lucky for us, not only do we always have the grace and the love of Jesus available and we always have the opportunity to start fresh through the sacrament of reconciliation, through the Lord's plan for our life, we also have quite a few examples and you know what? I have a pretty close friend who's kind of a professional at, you know, starting fresh, doing things new. Some might say a discernment professional. And his name, if you haven't already guessed, is St. Ignatius of Loyola. What a guy. What a tremendous teacher. A beautiful example of perseverance, discernment and following the Lord's will with confidence. Let me fill you in on a little bit of his story. St. Ignatius was well on his way to fame and esteem and admiration in his life as a soldier. One day, while he was out doing soldier things, he was struck by a cannonball, which put him in the hospital for quite some time. In the midst of his suffering and long recovery, because there were no romance novels available in the hospital that he was recovering in, he picked up some books and started reading about the life of Christ and the life of the saints. He became so inspired by their lives of virtue, the Lord's action in his life, in these saints' lives, that his heart began to change. He began to take notice of the movements of his heart and how when he thought of good and virtuous, heroic things, in the truest sense, in the holy sense, he felt alive and he felt inspired and joyful and fulfilled. But when he would think about sinful things or things that were leading him away from the faith, he became desolate and more lost and confused. And so the movements of his heart and his ability to discern eventually became the path to his vocation, to the rest of his life. He developed this desire to convert non-believers. And when he recovered from his cannonball injuries, he fulfilled one of his desires to go to the Holy Land and convert the people there. But he was only there for two weeks before it became too dangerous and he was told to come home. Then he thought, oh, you know, I could use some more education. So he completed his master's degree at the age of 44 and then applied to get his doctorate degree but was turned away because of his age. So no matter which setback you consider, the cannonball, the Holy Land trip cut short, the denial to doctoral studies, or any of the other small bumps in the road that he faced, scrupulosity, small conversions of his heart, he was carried by the grace of God. And the same is true for us. Because his heart was is attuned to the Holy Spirit and desired God's will for his life because he realized that that is ultimately what would fulfill him. It carried him through the hard times. It carried him through the challenges. It made him a changed man in the midst of his deepest suffering when he was on his deathbed, when he wasn't sure if he was going to live to see another day. His heart yearned for heaven because he read the stories of other hearts yearning for heaven. And so if you are feeling discouraged, at this time of the year, or maybe you're not. Maybe you're just feeling stuck or not really sure where to go next. Maybe you've been struck by a cannonball, literally or figuratively, hopefully figuratively, and you don't know what comes next. I invite you to entrust your intentions to the intercession of St. Ignatius or take a little tip from his book and maybe read about other saints and other people's lives that could inspire you. The Holy Spirit is living and active in all of our lives. We can see how he moves 
through the testimonies of others, through the movements of our own heart, and that will continually inspire us. Just because today isn't the first day of a new year does not mean that you cannot start fresh. Because the calendar does not decide the will for our lives. That is the Lord's job. 2021 has not made you any promises. It has not offered you any consolation and it does not have the power to fulfill you. However, somebody else does and his name is Jesus. So this year, if nothing else, if you don't give up your snooze button, if you don't make your bed every day, if you don't lose weight or exercise more or spend less money, save more money, the Lord has something new for you and he has a good plan for you this year. Saint Ignatius, pray for us. Bye.